Welcome. If you watch the video I made when I built the SDF1, you will know that I am a fan. I wanted to build a Super Valkyrie for a while. And after building several models, I started to feel that I had enough knowledge to do it right. I didn't want to just build the model, I wanted to make it look cool, like in the movie Macros, Do You Remember Love? The scene I used for reference is only 6 seconds long, but it shows the best of the animation made in the 80s. With all its limitations, it looks awesome, even by today's standards. It is a shame the movie has not been properly translated to English because of legal issues. I saw online that there is a version on VHS, but it also says that it is not as good as it could be. I would love to watch it with the kids. For this model, I bought the Hasegawa VF1S. The pieces match the colors of the area where they should go, requiring little painting if this is what I would like to do. However, the box does not include the pilot or the extra weapons shown in the movie. These I had to buy on the side, as they came in the VF1 weapon set. The good news is that there are lots of decals, and they include the movie insignias. I decided to make the base first. This is because having the base in place helped me see how the model would fit with the environment, and how the wiring would need to be placed from the power source up to the model. To make the angle, I took the measurements of the model and made a small sketch of how it should all look together. Then I thought how big the tunnel would be, made a circle on paper and put numbers to the idea. I made the base from scratch using 5mm foam boards. The foam board is very light and easy to cut. It maintains its shape and will hold in place over time, unlike cardboard, for example. Also, it is covered in a paper-like sheet, which gives a smooth surface to paint. One thing I did not manage to create was a single shine for the orange parts of the base. In the film, it looks like a giant oval that shines orange. This I couldn't do, and I ended up with a flat surface with the LEDs under semi-translucent plastic. But the light from the LEDs shines too brightly, and they do not look like a single light. The base colors are black and flat green, they combine very well. For the translucent plastic, I used clear orange. The base uses 3mm LEDs put in parallel, except for the flares and engines, which use 5mm LEDs. For the source, I use a 9V battery and resistors for each set of LEDs. As there were many sets of LEDs in parallel, using a small board helped to have some order with the wires instead of having the resistors and wires hanging together. This time I made bigger holes compared to previous models, where I tried to use the minimum size holes for several wires. For the flares, I used remnant parts of the expansion funnel effect made by Bandai that I used to build the Sazabi. This expansion is one of the best for making flares and engine blasts. It would be great to find it transparent, so the clear paints would work much better. The base was done really fast, I was amazed at how quickly it came together. I put a connector on it so the model would connect instead of having a wire go all the way from the power source to the LEDs in the model. This way, I can separate the model and the base in the future, to move it or clean the base. It also made the connection process easy, as passing wires would have been challenging. With the base done and the lights tested, I started building the model. It doesn't present many complications. But I had to come up with my own steps to put it together instead of following the manual. The wiring, paint, and lights meant that I had to keep in mind what to do and when.
I also decided to paint the model instead of keeping the plastic colors. This included the black and red lines that come as decals. These markings were all replaced by paint. To make this happen, I painted smaller pieces that would be part of bigger ones and wouldn't be able to paint properly when the larger pieces were complete. Then I used masking tape or liquid latex to cover the painted parts, and painted with the next layer of paint. If you use liquid latex, be mindful that it needs a few layers and is not perfect, some fixes are needed. The first large pieces put together were the legs. I glued a naked wire to the piece using a glue gun so it would travel internally. I would cut the excess wire later, as I added more than enough. To join the pieces and remove the line resulting from joining them, I used melted sprues between the pieces. I used old sprues from other models, this is why the colors are different. As the model would be painted, this difference disappeared. But the concept still applies if I don't want to paint the model, I just need to use the same sprues from the model kit. This method is slow, as it takes at least a day for the melted sprues to dry properly. Also requires clamps to make sure the pieces join properly. But the reward is that the lines disappear, making the pieces look much better. Once the piece is solid, it requires filing and sanding to finish it. This will remove some details and panel markings, which will need to be made again using a precision knife. You can see that I added a blue painted piece that was painted in advance. I covered it with liquid latex before painting. A piece that was glued or painted will require a day to dry properly. This is a slow process, so the best is to do as many as you can in one go. This means doing a few different parts at the same time. I decided to paint the pilot instead of using the decals that came with the kit. It required a lot of attention, patience, and a steady pulse. When it is all done, if you notice, and you look really closely, it looks horrible. But as you look from afar, the mix of colors works. Either that or I need new glasses. The wings do not have a great secret. I decided to use the panel liner before painting the final layer of white. This is because I find it messy to do it on a white plane. Paint white. The effect is not as strong as you could get if you decide not to paint the model and use the liner directly on the plastic piece. Painting the markings on the model is a time-consuming task. Not only the masking, but also the drying time. But I feel these details make the model come to life. I put the decals on before putting the Valkyrie together. As I said, they are high quality and require a bit of handling, but they work very well. There are at least a hundred of them, and it takes well over a day to add them all. There are many small ones that add so much detail to the final model. It is also a slow process to dry, as I use decal fix. This product requires a day to dry, and in my opinion, it is worth it. Beware, it releases fumes, so everything was done in a well-aired place. I used the dry brush technique with white on the dark pieces to highlight corners and soften the colors. When used softly, it adds shades and makes the dark colors less flat, highlighting details. 
the change is really subtle but noticeable. Finally, the time came to put most of the model together and place it on the base. Having it there really motivated me, I could see how it fits together and what details I had to correct. I tested the lights and checked that the power reached everywhere. I know that in the movie, the Valkyrie doesn't have the arms out. Why wouldn't I include the arms? They look awesome. I left the engines for last. It was mainly because, at that time, I didn't know how I would connect the wires with the power. Notice that I decided to put a 3mm LED in the front cannon, adding to the 5mm LEDs for the engines. This detail will be important later. After putting the pieces together, filing, sanding, painting, adding the decals, and using the dry brush, it was time to complete the model. I put the engines in place and measured the wiring that would be soldered to cut it to size. Then I glued them in place and soldered the wiring. When I finished soldering in this tight space, I realized that I hadn't paid attention to the voltage of the LEDs. Look what happens when I connect the cannon led to the power that feeds both engines and the cannon. I should have tested it earlier and used the same sized LEDs for the engines. If anyone has an idea how to fix this, let me know. Maybe another resistor? Maybe make the model again, this time using the same sized LEDs? Anyway, live and learn. The final details include acrylic rods painted with clear blue for the lasers. Something I realized as I moved the base with the Valkyrie is that the weight of the model makes it difficult to stay in place. I decided to glue it in place with a glue gun and a decoration blue stick. The glue is strong and it won't be difficult to remove compared to other glues. And it actually fits with the flares. Building the VF1 model kit has been an incredible experience. It brought back a lot of memories. Yes, I am that old. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share and subscribe.